So recently I was working on this webmasters site for the new podcast that I've been working on, and I wanted to have uh, profile pictures of speakers so that you could see like who was on the episode. I didn't want to use, you know, the full thumbnail graphics. I wanted just like their headshot as kind of a little like icon so you could see kind of the different people's faces uh, without seeing the same <clears throat> thumbnail graphic like over and over. So what I ended up doing is installing a plugin that's part of this seriously simple podcasting like suite of plugins that they have. This one is a guests or technically it's a speaker's taxonomy that works with your episode custom post type or your post type for episodes. So it lets you basically assign different speakers to episodes. And I think what's probably more useful for is if you have like a lot of like recurring speakers, you're a podcast with like a couple of different hosts or something like that. And then you can see these like taxonomy pages where, you know, you can see all of the episodes with that particular guest. I'm not super worried about that part. Um, right now I have those pages like no indexed for now, but I just wanted some way to kind of categorize and hopefully reuse these over time as I'm hoping to get some of these guests to come back and talk about different topics. So I saw the plugin. Um, it's technically speaker, but I changed it to guest with like a little filter. And then I wanted to have this image. So that is not a core feature having an image. It's really just the taxonomy. So I actually added a very, very, very old plugin. Let me see if I can find it. WP Term Images by Triple J. I mean, this plugin hasn't been tested, hasn't been updated in four years, doesn't have a lot of active installs. Most people would say probably don't install this plugin, but I know, uh, you know, that he's a good developer. He's going to take care of this plugin if it ever needed to. Um, this kind of came around from like the WordPress 4.4 era where they were, where there was no custom fields and custom metadata on taxonomy terms, and that became part of core. So this was like a bunch of plugins that kind of worked for that. So I installed it. It worked pretty fine. It basically gives you like a little image field that you can add to show on your taxonomy, and then it does literally nothing else. So it doesn't show it anywhere. It doesn't like give you a block to use it or anything cool like that, right? So that's when I decided I need to make a custom block. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to see how this custom block worked and how I had to think through some of the issues. Because what I first thought was, I really just want the image from the taxonomy. So I'll just put an image block there and use something like the block bindings API to replace that image, you know, programmatically under the hood. So I'd put the image block there. I'd have all the full controls and styling and everything of the image block, but it would you know, and it would block bindings, like sync the URL of the image to pull it from whoever was the speaker attached to that post. Seems like a good idea in theory, did not actually pan out mainly because it's a taxonomy, which means theoretically I could have multiple guests in the future, which would mean it's not just one image. It'd be multiple images for that particular post. So up one post might have one image, one post might have three images because you can assign, you know, multiple guests or taxonomies to a single post. So I couldn't just do one image block. I thought maybe like a gallery block and then it goes inside to the images and so it just got too confusing. And I, I didn't really like that. I just, there wasn't a good upper like place to do it. And then I thought, I mean, I could do this with PHP very easily. So, um, why not just make a custom block and use some PHP to render this and I did, so let's take a look at that custom block. We can do it, we can look at it here first and you can see how ridiculously simple it is. So it's a custom block. It just says term image and it has like a few basic styles, but it doesn't even have like, like you can see the images are like border radius. I couldn't even get that block support to work. So <laughs> it just has a few basic styles and settings. I think at some point I need to determine like right now it's hard coded in a lot of places. It would probably need a few more settings to be something usable. Um, but that's basically all it is. I pop it inside the query loop and it just handles everything for me. So let's just take a quick look at how the block works. And then, and I think what'll be useful is to see how I did it in PHP and then how I had to go back and do it in JavaScript to get it to show up here inside the block editor, which I think for most people would be the hardest part. So I'm here in the repo for um, this website. It's a pretty basic 
website. It's just a, the Ollie theme, so there's not a lot of like custom code to it, but I have a little plugin just with some, you know, basic functionality that I needed to add to it. So I updated my plugin to support a block. It also does things like load, like a little custom CSS for some of the ser seriously simple plugin blocks, stuff like that. But let's just take a look at this term image block that I created. So this is the block.json, very simple. Um, the main thing here is, you know, I named the block. I did all that kind of normal stuff. I tried to put on some like block supports, but it wasn't really working that well. And there were some that I didn't feel like I needed, like um, background color, text color. I don't need those at all. Um, I turn on the box shadow one. I don't think that it seems to be working that well. And then I turn on the dimensions. That doesn't seem to be working either. I'm not fully sure why. And I could not find any of the border controls. That's the one I really wanted. I wanted, I wanted. can you define the image with an height? Can you define the border color and style and radius? I wanted all that. Could not find it here. I'm guessing it's still experimental and whatnot. The key part here, though, is this uses context. What uses context does is it basically says like, hey, there's going to be a block. This block's going to be inside other blocks. So it needs to get information from its parent blocks. I need to have access to that information. So I need to know like the post ID, the post type, the query ID. In our case, we really just need the post ID. But you know, because the block is going to show up inside of this post template, it needs to know which post we're looking at so it can pull the right terms and pull the right image. And so let's start with the render.php because I think that's a little bit easier to understand. It's, you know, this is how we would have written it for years and years using PHP templating and WordPress. So I think this is like very clean and easy to understand. I get the post ID from that context that we just talked about. So when you're inside of a block, you can't really use like get the ID type functions. It's very annoying. It's very inconsistent, but um, it's not really a safe way to do it. So inside of a block, you get the post ID from the blocks context. And then there's that speaker taxonomy, right? So I just get the terms for the speaker um, for this post ID. And if there are none, I just drop out. I don't render the block at all. That's depends on you, how you want to style it and stuff. But if you're on the front end of the site and there's no guests, just doesn't show it. Now, if there are guests, the outer container of the block will show. But as it loops through each speaker, because remember there could be multiple speakers, um, it has to get the image from that term meta. And um, if there's no image, it doesn't return it. So this is a little bit of an inconsistency, right? Like I should probably do all this work outside of the template um, and find out if there's any images to show before I get to here, right? That would probably make more sense. So place for me to optimize. If it does get the image, then it just spits out, you know, the thumbnail size version of the speaker's image because I'm just getting the, the you know, it's just like get post meta, it's just get term meta. So pretty simple, very easy to understand. It happens in the order that you see it. Um, probably could optimize this stuff here to get that out of the templating and do all the logic more up here. Um, but otherwise, pretty good. The only other thing I added is a little bit of CSS. I um, like I said, I wanted a border radius. I wanted, uh, you know, to control it. I also wanted if you had like more than one uh, speaker, instead of the circles being next to each other, the, the next ones would kind of overlap a tiny bit. You get like this little overlapping effect where the circles kind of touch each other. So really basic styles. I mean, I would love for this to be controlled in the block, like in the block editor. It's not. I think it's okay. Then I had to make, you know, this work inside the block editor. That's where I got tripped up. I tried to make a video doing it in real time, but I had forgotten so much block stuff that uh, it was it was kind of a disaster. So we're going to jump over to the edit.js file. This is really the only other important file in this block. And what the edit.js file is, is this is basically handles this, you know, viewing it inside the block editor. So the, so once I made the render.php, it worked perfectly well on the front end. The, the block showed. It was great. Getting it to show the image here, a little bit harder. So let's see, we're gonna skip through all of this, but I will say you have to kind of get used to using React things like use state and use effect. Those were really important. I kept forgetting about use effect and it was punishing me for it. And you will use use select, which is um, kind of the WordPress way to get uh, data from, it's kind of like, think of it as like a, it's the WP query or like, you know, the way that you query data from, from WordPress. And that comes out of this WordPress data package. So 
these are kind of the critical things that you have to get really comfortable with when working in blocks. So let's jump in here. Inside of my edit function, first I get that post ID from the context.post ID. So in that case, let's go here. Very similar, right? We're just getting the context out of there. And then I'm using state to save something. So, you know, it's a lot better to put data into state instead of just defining variables. So I need the image URLs, right? Because I need to loop through those URLs for all the avatars. So I'm just setting up a little place to hold it, a little empty array, and it gives me a little function, and I'll be able to manage that later. And the reason I'm doing state is because when the block editor first loads, I might not have that data yet. I'm like waiting for the block editor to run all of its JavaScript and give it to me. So I need a little place to hold it up here in state. Already a little harder than PHP. This whole function, I'm not going to lie, uh, GitHub Copilot wrote it for me because I always struggle to go through and find <laughs> all the exact ways to do it. And then there's like new ways to do it. And there was like the old with select and there's all this like confusing stuff. It wrote this for me, but it's it generally looks pretty much the same, which is I'm trying to get those terms, right? I'm trying to get this function right here, post ID taxonomy in JavaScript. It's a little bit more confusing because I'm querying the REST API. I don't have those like nice and easy wrappers that I have in PHP, a little more work, but essentially I'm going to get all the speaker taxonomy records for that post ID. Um, and I'm going to pass the post ID as sort of a dependency to make sure that if the post ID updates, it gets, you know, refreshes those terms. And then terms will probably be empty for a while, right? I'm waiting for terms to uh, have something. But what I'm essentially doing is using a use effect, which basically says, hey, pay attention to terms. If it changes, do this data. If it doesn't change, don't keep doing this. And at some point, it's going to check that terms. If there's any terms in it, it's going to pull out all the URLs for the image, and it's going to set them here. And so that piece right there is pretty critical. It's probably also the piece that I didn't do here, which is like, do the URLs outside of the templating logic. So in some ways, this is kind of nice. And then finally, the block itself, it renders. If there's some image URLs, it loops through them and shows the image. Um, <clears throat> pretty basic image map here. And then if there's no images at all, it just shows a placeholder that says, hey, there is no uh, image for the speaker or there's no speakers assigned or something like that. So it's just kind of, you can see the block there, but it, you know, nothing too exciting. So. It's honestly not a lot of code, but it's a lot of knowledge that took me a while to remember because it's just so different than this, which always feels a lot simpler and easier to do. Um, both examples of code that really need some improvements. This was really like thrown together and all that sort of stuff, but um, overall pretty good. And I'll just throw in one last thing that I really actually struggled with is this image right here is part of the term, but it did not show up in the block editor in the REST API at all. So like when you get information in the block editor, you're getting it through the REST API, which means that information has to show up in the REST API. That was a huge thing that I really struggled with getting it to show up because like I said, that plugin is from the WordPress 4.4 era before like the REST API was even a twinkle in, you know, Ryan McHugh's eye or whatever. So it's not, um, it's not really set up to support that at all. So what I had to do, well, my one last little thing I'll show you just to give you the full thing. I had to register my own field on the REST API endpoint for speakers. So speakers gets its own REST API endpoint because it's its own taxonomy full of its own data. Um, and it has all the, you know, important information for each speaker, but it didn't have the image. So I had to write this little function. Um, it's pretty basic, but it just adds the image to the REST API result for each speaker. Um, it passes the ID of the image and just a URL to make it easy for me. Um, and so this was pretty simple. I will say I did spend way too much time trying to do like modify the endpoint or like modify the um, term meta. Like when you register the term meta, turn on the show is rest is true and none of that worked and I was getting very frustrated. This worked pretty well. So, so that was really the only extra functionality. So at the end of the day, 
what did I learn? Number one is that I need to, if you're not building blocks a lot, there's a lot of little weird things that you kind of forget about. That was definitely part of it. Um, number two, it's very easy to do this stuff in PHP. And I understand that it's a lot harder to do it in the JavaScript side, but as you get more familiar with it and more familiar with React conventions, you can definitely get um, further than you think with a lot less code than you think. Um, number three, AI code editor, at least for my sake, GitHub Copilot did okay. It didn't do great. There was a lot of weird stuff, a lot of weird moving parts, a custom taxonomy, a custom meta field. Like it was a little too abstract, I think, for Copilot at least to really give me great results. I ended up having to kind of hand code a lot of it. Um, I probably should try ask cursor to see what it thinks. Um, but it works. Maybe I'll optimize this if other people are using the WP term images plugin and you want like a block that actually like gives you the full styling and pulls those term images into your template. Uh, let me know. I'll definitely work on an open source if people want it. Um, I mean, it is open source. It's in my repo. And if you haven't already, please uh, check out this webmasters.fm. It's a new podcast. I have interviews with very cool people already up and more coming. And it's really geared towards people that are masters of the web doing very cool things. Thanks. <laughs>